Hello, today is Saturday, May 7th, 2022, making this the week 18 Create Brilliance update. How are you doing? It is a rather beautiful day here today. Yesterday was hot, humid, and rainy and stormy. But today, it's very pretty outside. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time outside, but uh, unfortunately, I spent some in the weather yesterday. But that's, I'll get, I'll get to that. Um, if you notice, I am wearing kitty ears. <laughs> this was one of the many um, quick crochet projects, or many. Well, yeah, okay, fine. Two. We did, I did two quick crochet projects, three quick craft projects. I, that's, that's how this is going to work. Uh, but yeah, this was one of the projects I did. It was actually a really popular pattern on Ravelry a couple of weeks ago when I was kind of perusing the crochet side of things more heavily. And uh, I just thought, you know, I'm, I'm curious enough to try. And I went ahead and I made them and I made them in shades of pink. Turn my head, they're kind of, you know, they're stuck on there. So, um, yeah. So yeah, I've got pink with little bits of white and gray and then a darker pink inside and some blue. And some floof. Um, <laughs> the reason why I made them this color scheme is because I have this little um, suspender dress from I think it's Torrid, um, and it has it has the Disney cats as the print. So I thought, okay, pink ears to wear with a pink, um, you know, suspender skirt or you know, kind of like you know, it's not quite a pinafore. I wouldn't quite go as far as to say pinafore, but at any rate. Um, <laughs> random things but anyway so this was my this was my uh my handmade fiberware today um earlier in the week i guess this was for tuesday that i made them but um i made them monday night just whoops i just dropped one good thing there's two of them i made a pair of crocheted earrings and it was because the dress i was planning to wear on tuesday um i was having trouble sorry I was having trouble deciding um, what what shawl or what have you to wear and with it, and you know I and I was like you know, I was kind of looking around and I was like you know making earrings sounds like a really good idea and so these are fairly long drops um, they do rest right on my shoulder uh, but it's okay um, actually the original pattern that is, um, that I found on Ravelry. Um, that goes into how to make the little center medallions actually had um, more length on it, but my short little neck wasn't going to, uh, I wasn't going to really work. Um, another thing I made this week, <laughs> it was a week for small, for, for, for multiple small projects were some crystal antennas. And here's, here's the story of why I was out in the heat and humidity yesterday. Um, well, I was at the, uh, I went to the shop for a little bit to prep for today's classes, um, or today's class, I should say. And, uh, but in the evening, there was an attempt, there was a Guinness World Record attempt, an official one, you know, and it's, it's so hard not to like, you know, react with these on kind of thing. But yeah, they, they just. They're just little antenna. And anyway, it was the, the record attempt was for the most people dressed as butterflies and to count as being dressed as butterflies. One had to be wearing the same color on their torso, their arms and their legs. So long sleeve shirt and long pants. Um, and then they had to have wings affixed to their back and they had to have antenna on their head. So um, I, I mean, wearing a solid color. Um, shirt and pants was not an issue, but I already had a pair of, um, pastel uh, wings from a couple Halloweens back. And so I busted out the stash, my dragon horde of, of, of crystals, um, crystal beads and a few lamp work and just random things. And I made myself some antenna and they were very fun to wear a little heavy, but very fun to wear. Um, sadly, sadly, the Guinness World Record attempt, which was um, to benefit uh, Vashti House or Vashti House, I'm, um, it's a local. Um, it started as an outreach for Presbyterian ministry, um, but they are a a local um, 
benefact I'm I'm losing the words. Um anyway, they support <laughs> children and families and address children's mental health. And since May is mental health month and this was uh, mental children's mental health week, I think, or maybe it's children's mental health month as well at any rate. Um, th and the butterfly is their symbol. This was um, their way to um, do something fun and also kind of spread awareness and uh, end some of the stigma or reduce some of the stigma for addressing childhood mental health issues, which definitely in favor of reducing that stigma. Absolutely. Abolish it. Get rid of it. Um, so yes, a friend of mine had tagged me on Facebook for the event and I'm like, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> and so we went out, but sadly we were 30 people shy. The record was, I believe, 367. We needed 368 people. And the final word was we were approximately 30 people shy of the goal. But nonetheless, we had a good time. Um, we had a good time, even though it was hot and humid. It was raining right up until um, the event was due to start. And so um, I, we kind of you know, we as a general group wondered if that was perhaps one of the reasons why turnout was a little bit lower than expected. Um, you know, maybe because maybe the rain did scare some folks off and they're like, yeah, we're just not going to do it. But um, anyway, we had a good time. So that was the antenna. And then I have another project that I started yesterday. This is actually um, going to be a sample for Fuzzy Goat. We got some, um, we carry, in addition to yarns and knitting and crochet materials, um, we have kits for all sorts of fun handcrafts. And we just got in some new embroidery kits. And so um, I took this one home to make it up for the, it's felt applique. It's in a bag right now. That's why it's shiny. And um, let's say I could take it out, but it's just easier this way. Um, it's easier to not and slightly less loud. But anyway, so it's it's felt figures that are appliqued on and then embroidered on top of. And uh, that's fun. Um, the thing about that project and and I shared this with my boss um, is that it really does make you slow down, whereas with knit or crochet, once you, once you have a rhythm established, once you've got your tension engaged and all that established, you can just rip through it as quickly as, as you're capable. Um, but embroidery actually makes you stop and slow down because a lot of those stitches, the decorative stitches, it might have a loop that's tacked on two ends, but you want to keep the sides open enough. And in order to do that, you have to relax. You, you can't pull the thread tight. This isn't like sewing seams um, or anything like that. You really do have to allow for some uh, relaxation, some give in the thread. And kind of cool. I mean, it's kind of a lesson there, but that's, that's not where we're going. Um, otherwise, I had to really think about what I did all this week. Because these were just small, like, evening snippets. So I'm like was I doing the rest of the week? Because I know I was busy. I know I was doing things and it, you know, I was, I was at the shop on, you know, Tuesday afternoon and Friday morning. And then today, um, this out or midday ish <laughs> kind of straddling, um, the midday. And I'm like, but what else did I do? I know I was busy. Well, I continued to work on the, um, surface pattern design for the um using the dessert uh drawings and I'm still fiddling with that. I um have a couple of mock-ups done and I just kind of I needed to walk away and kind of just, you know, it's like let me think about this for a little bit. Um I also it was time to send out the monthly newsletter for the uh mailing list for the books uh for my readers and um because I am participating in, and I can't remember if I mentioned this last week or not. I think I did. I am participating in a um, short story month promotion with some other, 10 other cozy writer, mystery writers. Wow. If only I could speak. Um, <laughs> and, and so I needed to make sure to, you know, write my newsletter, send it out and include that information. And 
I did so had to write the newsletter and then I also had to make sure that the month's colorful mysteries coloring page was completed and uploaded to the website so that was another thing that I worked on and yeah so it has been it has been a very busy week but I have I wouldn't say I don't have anything to show for it but I have small things to show for and those small things might not be indicative of all of the time that was put towards everything this week. Um, that being said, I think that's where we're going to get this week's brilliance is lesson. And that is that brilliance is fluctuating. Okay. What I mean by that is that some weeks are going to be very big, huge weeks where we have, you know, it's like we can, we can put our hands on something physical that, yes, I did this. This is the culmination of however much time and effort and it looks like it. And it's an appropriate representation of where, of how we spent our time. And other weeks, other days, other months, <laughs> are going to be, they're going to be more low key. That's not to say that you're not busy. That's not to say that you're not refining and, and polishing up your brilliance. It's just that some things aren't as visible. A diamond shines brightest when a light is boom, pinpoint, and it's picking up all those facets. But sometimes a diamond is put away into a jewelry box. And I don't know where I'm going with this metaphor. I'm making it up as I go along. <laughs> but it's fluctuations. Sometimes it's out on display. Sometimes it's resting. Sometimes it's put away. This week was not a put away week. It was, a very, it was working very hard, but there's not a lot to show from it. I mean, it's like, yes, I have the earrings. I have the ears. I have this. But again, I happen to know that those only like, these take less than an hour to complete, and that includes choosing the beads. Um, these took a couple of nights, but only a few hours each. The uh, the antenna that I just dropped. Um, these, I mean, these took hardly any time at all. I mean, this is... Except for the fact that I was trying to, like, match up the colors as I did them to kind of make that little rainbow pastel... Um, and I was being so careful to, you know, try and find like beads in this dragon horde of a cigar box full of beads. Um, in fact, do I still have two? Oh, it's heavy. There's a lot in here. Um, yeah, this is the, oh, I really don't want to spill them, but this is the dragon horde of beads that I was, you know picking through and this is how they came to me i did not um i did not dump all these different colors together but this is, that's they were gifted to me almost thought they fell um they were gifted to me and i received them gratefully um and i've been able to use them in different projects and i still have tons more but you know it takes a little time to to find what you're looking for when they're all mixed up like that but rather than saying, oh, and I, you know, I worked on the book some too, by the way, but a lot of it was more behind the scenes book work, which is something I need to transition from going into this week. I really need to, and I want to get back to the story at hand. Um, you know, I had done the plotting, I've got it ready, so I know where the, the road's leading. I just have to write it now, just but i want to i want to focus on that a little bit more because this week hasn't been focused on word count it just hasn't um it's not where the week has gone but um but yeah so and you know i'm only a week and a half i'm yeah i'm like barely a week and a half away from heading back out to arizona i pro i'm pretty sure i won't have the first draft done by then um but that's okay but i do want to get it done because i have seen some read throughs um going in for the going on occurring anyway i can tell when somebody's reading the books through the kindle app for instance or on a kindle or whatever um 
but yes, the ebooks. I can tell when somebody is reading the ebooks through like Kindle Unlimited because I get, I can see the pages read. Not like the individual pages, just the sum total per day. Not, not who's reading them. It doesn't drill down that far. <laughs> Big Amazon is not watching in that respect. It's just telling me how many page reads because I do, I, you know, do make money off of those, thankfully. And I could actually see that, you know, at least a couple people, two, three people at least, were reading through the books, the whole series. And I'm grateful. Um, and so now I'm spurred on even more to get the fourth one done <laughs> and get it out and continue the series. Um, whereas, you know, I was kind of in a lull. It was fluctuating. My productivity was fluctuating. Um, but also, in my case, productivity, brilliance, my creativity fluctuates between the projects I'm working on. So this week was very hands-on. It was very tactile. And I will get hyper-focused, tunnel vision, um, really, you know, dive deep into something like that. For a little while, and then I will tra I will transition back to I will you know I'll reroute back into doing something a little less obvious, and that's okay. That's what keeps me from burnout. Personally, this is my my way of preventing burnout because I've been there, done that, don't want to do it again. So yeah. In, you know, in our lives, we will have fluctuations in our work, in our interests. There will be fluctuations. And while those fluctuations do not. Okay. And so while it may appear that we are more or less productive or more or less creative or more or less anything. We are no more or less brilliant for doing that, for accepting that that is a part of the creative process, that that is a part of life. And so if you feel that you are perhaps in a fluctuation or you know, you're fluctuating and you're not where you want to be, understand and accept this is a fluctuation and it's not permanent. That's all. One heads up <laughs> before I close. Speaking of fluctuations, um, if you feel yourself getting a little cranky, testy, uh, misunderstandings and miscommunications, just be kind of aware that Mercury goes retrograde on the 10th, I believe it is. Um, and then we'll be returning direct um, uh, towards the end of the month. Um, yeah, usually lasts for about three weeks or so. So just be aware. Back up your computers. <laughs> Make sure your data is safe. Um, you know, change your passwords if you need to. <laughs> Write things down so you don't forget. And if somebody said something that that makes you want to bow up or be insulted or, or, or feel maligned in some way. Do yourself a favor. No one else. Do yourself a favor. And I have to remind myself of this too. Take a breath, take a beat. And think maybe, maybe they didn't mean it that way. Gently ask for clarification if needed. or. Just don't even don't even give them the the time of day to respond if it's clearly a negative. Because life's not worth it. Time, your time is not worth it. So do what you can. Be safe. Watch your data. <laughs> and I will be back to chat with you in another week. Until then, bye bye.